viewers, welcome back to the channel. Um, thank you for watching. This is a uh, bit of a follow-up to the, the last video I did around the uh, GoPro setup for my um, my motorcycle helmet. Uh, in that video, you would have seen I got a media mod for the Hero 8 and a Purple Panda microphone, um, and that plugs into the back of the media mod and runs around inside the helmet. Um, I did discover some sort of clicking and popping in the audio um, when I did that and somebody online suggested that turning off uh, wind noise protection would stop that um, but that didn't work at all so I started investigating what the issue is and my uh, suspicion was that the, the um, microphone was overloading the input to the GoPro and uh, that was confirmed by looking at some of the um, waveforms and things once it was imported into iMovie. So we'll have a look at that and see what we can do to fix that. Um, for full disclosure, I have actually ordered another microphone. I've ordered the Rode SmartLav Plus. Um, that hasn't arrived yet, but um, I've been doing a few experiments around um, trying to fix the, the Purple Panda. So let's have a look at that and hopefully that helps a few people. So when we have the media mod installed on the camera, it gives you some extra options around the audio, whether you choose the front mic or, or, the, um, or the rear mic or, you know, this external port here. So if you have a look and see, uh, if we go into preferences, and go down to I.O. And you can see it says audio input media mod. Now, if we, as soon as we plug a 3.5mm plug into there, even if it's not connected, it'll say standard mic. Now that then has another sub-menu which gives you a bunch of different settings. So standard mic, standard mic plus, powered mic, powered mic, mm, stand, uh, powered mic plus. No. So standard mic is what you want for the Purple Panda. Standard mic plus, definitely not, because that increases the input by 20 dB, which is making the, making the problem worse. Um, and then there's some options for powered mics. So some microphones, uh, condenser microphones, actually need power to run. So the Purple Panda doesn't need that. Um, and then line in, that would be from, say, a guitar or, or whatever. So we certainly want it set to standard mic, which I think is the default. That'll, that's what it'll set itself to when you plug the, uh, plug the thing in. So that's uh, what you want there. So we'll leave that there. Now, there was also some discussion on some websites around changing the wind uh, setting, um, which didn't seem to make any difference to me. So if we go in here, edit your, uh, your, your settings for whatever you're using, and then go down to, under ProTune, there is that's where you choose the front or the back mic in the media mod and then wind on, off or auto. And somebody suggested switching that to off would fix the problem, but what you'll see is that as soon as you plug in an external mic, that all gets greyed out. So I'm assuming that um, that wind setting uh, doesn't come into effect when you've got the external mic in, so that doesn't make any difference at all. Not that it makes a huge difference with the standard mics anyway. Just thought I'd mention that. So as quite a few people do, uh, they use iMovie on a on Mac or even on a phone to um, edit all this footage. So what I'll do is just put on a, um, a demonstration of the sort of popping and clicking issues that um, that we saw when I first used the Purple Panda. And then we can have a look at the actual audio in there and see what the problem is. So 
this is the footage that I just showed you um, with the audio detached in iMovie so we can get a better look at the audio. So you can do that, see down there that, um, you know, green is good. When it starts getting into the yellow zone, uh, that's when it's starting to overload. And then, I don't know whether you can see, but there's these red peaks, which is when it has definitely overloaded the input of the GoPro. And that's where we're getting the clicks and the pops. And that sort of shows that the um, Purple Panda, which isn't specifically made for the GoPro, but um, probably works great for just uh, using it as a lapel microphone, uh, on a motorbike you get uh, overloading. So we need to look at what we can do to uh, reduce the output from the microphone, uh, put something in between the microphone and the uh, and the GoPro. Now you can get uh, attenuators uh, on eBay, etc., that have a volume control with the 3.5 input uh, and output, uh, but they're quite bulky. So what I wanted to do was um, make something that would fit quite nicely in between the helmet and the uh, and the GoPro. So let's have a look at that. So this is the circuit diagram of. Uh what I built to fix the problem and it's just a basic attenuator so you can see that um, you've got your 3.5 mil input from the purple panda microphone now uh, that's the tip ring sleeve uh, connector uh, like you know like this uh, the purple panda itself has a tip ring ring sleeve so it has two rings so you still need to use this adapter that comes with the purple panda so that goes like this and then the purple panda comes out here um, so basically it just takes the because uh, the purple panda is a stereo microphone we have a left and right side so we have to duplicate what we've done so basically it takes the input from the microphone uh, from the left channel and the right channel this is earth uh, earthed along here and it um, puts that input across between these two 820 ohm and 270 ohm resistor, which is a total of what that's uh, 1.9, 1.09K, same on this side. So the input from the microphone is spread across here. And then the output comes from down here. So it's actually taking only about, uh, probably only about a quarter of the signal um, from, it's coming from the microphone and then it's sending it through to the 3.5 mil uh, plug which goes into the back of your GoPro. Um, so basically I've experimented with a bunch of these um, these values and originally I had a 560 and a 560 so it was taking about half the signal. That made it much better but was still a little bit uh, overloading a little bit so that's why I changed it to 820 and 270 which seems to be sort of a a, uh, a good middle ground. You, you might find the audio is uh, a little low. Uh, you can always bump that up using uh, iMovie or whatever you're using, but if it's, if it's overloading, then you, you're really stuck with what you've got. So, um, yeah, that's just the basic circuit. Um, so let's have a look at what you actually need to uh, make one of these. So the bits and pieces uh, you'll need if you want to make one of these is uh, just a basic um, extension cable, a tip ring sleeve 3.5 millimeter uh, extension. Now this one's quite long, obviously you don't need it that long. In fact, the shorter the better because we want to try and uh, make it, uh, you know, uh, quite a short little adapter that goes between the camera and the uh, and the microphone connector. So, uh, we'll, you know, 99% of this length will get uh, deleted. Um, and then you need two uh, 820 ohm resistors and then two, two 270 ohm resistors. Uh, and probably a bit of heat shrink to make it look nice and keep it all together. But uh, that's basically it. So fairly cheap components to make this attenuator. So we're trying to keep this... Um unit as small as possible so you can see I've soldered these resistors together in a bit of a clump uh, so on top we've got the we've got the uh, 270 ohms and then down underneath we've got the 820s 
So the, the here we've got the 820 and the 270 connecting for one channel and then the other channel. Over here we've got the 270s connected together and that's the earth connection for the, which goes in both directions. And then uh, top of the 820s left and right um, go to the uh, the input from the from the microphone. So we'll use um, uh, heat shrink to uh, protect all those connections and also maybe a, a, a large piece of heat shrink to go over the top to make it all neat and tidy at the end. So here we have the cable cut down. Um, my particular cable I'm using has uh, red, white and yellow. Uh, after testing that out with the multimeter, uh, the red is the tip, which is the left channel. Uh, white is the ring, which is the right channel, and yellow is the earth. So we can see that the earth wire there is long enough to connect through to the other side. Um, so we'll try and solder this together and put some heat shrink on it, and uh, then we'll be finished and we can test it. So here is the finished product before I put that extra bit of heat shrink over the top and then probably maybe another layer right over the top of that as well. So um, yeah, I think it went okay. So we'll see when we test it. Right, so here we have the finished product plugged into the um, helmet and the GoPro. So you can see the um, tip ring ring sleeve to uh, tip ring sleeve adapter that comes with the Purple Panda. And then here's the attenuator that I've made going from there, covered in heat shrink and plugged into the back of the GoPro. So um, let's hop on the bike and um, give it a test ride and see how it sounds. Now, before we do the test ride, um, you may find after all of this, you're still getting the occasional crackle. Um, I know that I did when I had the cable uh, long uh, and I was I was just testing all these values. Uh, as I moved my head, I would notice crackling, and that can come from the actual connectors. So the more connectors you've got, the more chance of um, having uh, you know crackling when those when those uh, fittings uh, just move slightly. So in you know in this case we've got the the connection between the tip ring ring sleeve to the to the little adapter from from Purple Panda. And then we go from there through to the attenuator I made and then from there into the back of the, the camera. So there's three possible uh, sources of uh, crackling. So you want to try and stabilise those connections as much as possible. Maybe with some heat shrink over the top of the ones uh, uh, that you can and then maybe even try and um, uh, stabilise the, the connection into the back of the GoPro as much as possible so that it doesn't move. Um, but that's a, that's a, you know obviously a different problem to uh, what the overloading problem is that we're trying to fix here. Okay, so this is the, with the finished attenuator with an 820 and a 270 ohm resistor on each channel. Cleaned all the connectors. Now let's see how that works. Illawarra Highway here, heading towards Robertson in the ODK zone, coming up to a 100k zone. Let's hope we're not getting pops and crackles. Too low. Check the audio, and it was there, but 
probably could have come up a bit so I changed the other resistor to 270 ohms so that gives you a total of about 1.09k or 1090 ohms and you're taking 270 of that so you're getting about a quarter of what's coming out of the mic going through to the GoPro which seems to be a uh, good value maybe just slightly peeking into the yellow occasionally but we shouldn't be going into the red and causing the pops and crackles okay so to have a look at the audio from that run uh, I've detached the audio in iMovie and um, you know you can see it's certainly peeking into the yellow with the uh, you know once we got up to speed and with a bit of wind noise etc but we're not going into the red and so we're not um, we're not hearing those pops and uh, crackles and things that are caused by the overloading so uh, that looks like it's worked so there you have it viewers while there's nothing wrong with the purple panda microphone great microphone but in my case uh, with the wind noise etc at speed on the motorbike it was overloading and uh, that little DIY project seems to have fixed the problem. So hopefully that uh, maybe helps a few people out uh, suffering from the same problem. Um, if you like the video, please uh, you know click on like and subscribe if you're interested in these types of videos. So thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.